my that there I asking would welcome me. I was lost, but he brought me in. Oh, his love for me. Oh, his love for me. Oh, the sun sets free. Oh, it's free. Ransomed me, his grace runs deep. While I was a slave to sin, Jesus died for me. Yes, he died for me. Who the sun sets free, always oh, free. Good afternoon or good evening, depending on where you're joining us from this 
day, this wonderful day that the Lord has made, that we may rejoice and be glad in it. We're so grateful that the Lord God has been faithful. The psalmist said the Lord has been mindful of us, that His mind has been full of us. Therefore, He will bless us and He will preserve us. And we trust that the Lord has been indeed mindful of you and has not only been mindful of you, but has proceeded on to bless you, to preserve you and keep you. The Apostle Paul said, having obtained help of God, I continue to this day. We continue to this day because we have obtained help from God. The psalmist said, my help is in the name of the Lord. Amen. Our help is in His name. And that's why we gather together this, this morning or whatever time it is where you are joining us from. We gather in that name that is above every other name. The name of Jesus. The name given unto men by which they should be saved. So it's a great pleasure to come to you again this morning from Dominion Assembly Church on Kiambu Road. My name is Felix Onyango, pastor. And uh, I'm just so glad that the Lord has given us another opportunity to fellowship together and to be built up by His Word, by the ministry of His Word. Amen. Shall we pray together as we get into the ministry of the Word of the living God this morning? Father, we thank you. Flesh prophets avails nothing. It's your spirit that gives life. It's your spirit that quickens. We pray that, Lord, as we sit under the ministration, Lord, of your word, pray that your spirit will bring to life your word in our hearts, that the entrance of that word will bring understanding, will bring wisdom, will bring refreshing, will bring rejoicing, will bring renewing, and that in all things, Christ will be magnified and His name glorified. Even as we look upon to you, we thank you, Father, and we bless you. You, Lord, who has been mindful of us, let your blessing be manifest. And be established of our lives through the ministry of your word this day today. We honor you and we give you glory. This we prayed in the name of Jesus. And everybody said amen and amen. Wow. It's a wonderful morning once again. The day that the Lord has made. I want us to get into the word of God looking at the topic today. Walking in the light, walking in the light, First John 1 from verse 5 to 7, First John 1 from verse 5 to 7, the Bible says, this then is the message which you have heard of him and declare unto you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do, and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Let's go to Isaiah 2 and verse 5. Isaiah 2 and verse 5. O house of Jacob, come ye and let us walk in the light of the Lord. O house of Jacob, come ye and let us walk in the light of the Lord. Beloved, I want to submit to you and as you indeed know that everything produces after its own kind. Chicken produce chicken. Cows produce cows. God produces or gives birth. You know, Nicodemus, a man learned asked Jesus, 
when he told him, unless you be born again, you cannot enter or inherit the kingdom of God. He asked him, how shall this be, seeing that I'm a grown man? <laughs> and he told him, whatsoever is born of flesh is flesh. Whatsoever is born of spirit is spirit. He was talking about the second birth. Being born again by the Spirit of the living God. And so we are children of God, beloved. We are proceeded, born of Him, born of His Spirit. First John chapter 4 and verse 4 says, You are of God. You are from God, little children. First John 4 and verse 4 says, You are from God, you've proceeded. The first part says, ye are of God. That is, you've proceeded from God. You've come forth from God. Little children. James 1, 18, you don't need to go there. The Bible says, he brought us forth, he bathed us again by the word of truth. Galatians 3, 26. The Bible says, ye are all children of God by faith. In Christ Jesus. That we are all children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. Let's go back to 1 John verse 5. 1 verse 5. This then is a message which you have heard of him and declare unto you that God is light. That God is light, and in Him is no darkness at all. That in Him, stay on verse 5. That God is light, and in Him is no darkness at all. Is it the writer of Habakkuk who said, who said you have purer eyes to behold iniquity. That God is so exalted. That God is so holy. That God is so righteous. The Bible says that in Him is no darkness at all. There's no darkness in God. Light represents what is good. Pure, true holy and reliable. Let me repeat that. Light represents what is good, pure, true, holy, and reliable. Darkness represents what is sinful and evil. The statement God is light means that God is perfectly holy and true. So Paul said, let all men be liars, but God be true. That the psalmist said, is a God of truth without iniquity, without injustice, without any crookedness. That is a God who keeps covenant, is a God who honors his word. He's a God who has integrity like you've never seen. God is perfectly holy and true. And that He alone, He alone can guide us out of the darkness of sin. Light is also related to the truth. In that light exposes what, whatever exists, whether it be good or bad. Ephesians 5, 13, the Bible says, But all things have their true character exposed by the light. All things having their true character exposed by the light are made manifest. For that which makes everything manifest or seen or revealed is light. It is light that exposes whatever exists, 
whether it be good or bad. In the dark, good and evil look alike. In the light, they can be clearly distinguished. It's very difficult to tell when you're in darkness, but in the light, everything is made manifest. So God is light. Acts 17 verse 28. The Bible says that in God, in Him we live, in Him we move, and in Him we have our being. That in God, Paul was talking to these people when they had an altar dedicated to their known God. And he was telling them that God has not left himself without witness. And so he ends up telling them that in him, in God, we live. In him we move. And in him we have our being. As certain also of your own prophets have said, for we are also his offspring. We have come from him. We have proceeded from the womb of his spirit. We are born again of water and of the spirit of God. That so in him we live. That our life issues from him. That in him we move. That our being is wrapped up in this God who is life. Why should we live in light? You ask yourself, why should we live, walk in the light? It's basically because him from whom you proceeded is light. The Bible says in him is no darkness at all. He is a God of truth, a God of holiness. There's no darkness in God. Psalm 104 verse 2 says he wraps himself with light as a garment. 1 Timothy 6 16 says he dwells or lives in an approachable light. That he dwells or lives in an approachable light. Beloved, we are children of light. First Thessalonians 4, verse 4. For you are all children of light, children of the day. We are not of the night of the darkness, the Bible says, First Thessalonians 4, from verse 4 to 5, that we are all children of light, children of the day. We are not of the night of the darkness. That's why walking in the light should come naturally to us because we are children of light. We are proceeded from God who is light. Amen. John, John 12, 35 to verse 36. The Bible says, For you are going to have the, the light just a little while longer. Walk while you have the light before darkness overtakes you. Whoever walks in the dark does not know where they're going. Believe in the light while you have light so that you may become children of light. Amen. Just building up on this topic. Walking in the light. First Peter 2 verse 9. It is God who has called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. 
The Bible says from verse 9, 1 Peter 2, but he had chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that you should show forth the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. It's not just light. It's his marvelous light. Light that makes you marvel. Light that makes you wonder. Wondrous light. Colossians 1.13. Thank you, Jesus. That he has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the Son he loves. That he has delivered us from the power, from the bondage of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son. That once we were slaves to darkness, once we were of the night, once we were held captive, bondage to darkness. But this God who so loved us, redeemed us by the blood of his Son, translated us, moved us from the, from the bondage of darkness, from the dominion of darkness, into his kingdom, into a right standing with him. The Bible says that we should show forth his praise. That through us, his name may be praised. That through our lives, through our conversation, his name may be glorified. Amen. So walking, walking in the light. We walk in the light because we've proceeded from him who is light. The Bible says that in him was life and that life was the light of man. Let me read this commentary, brief commentary for, to you. There's a presence of God in those who walk in the light. They aren't always aware of the light, but it's evident in how they speak. How they act and think about life, work, family, and the Christian faith. It's evident in how they speak, how they act, how they think about life, work, family, and the Christian faith. The light that is within all believers exposes and drives out the darkness. That this light that we carry, the Bible says we are being built up as dwelling places of God by His Spirit. That this light that we carry in us desires to shine through us. Not only desires, but as intended to shine through us. That through our lives, people may come to praise Him. This commentary say, says that that light is evident and seen in the way we act, in the way we speak. And I want to ask you today, is it evident in the way you speak? Is the light that you carry, the light that you are bearing, the light that's is inside of you. Is it evident in the way that you speak? Or you speak like anybody else? Paul told them, if there is strife among you, where one is saying, I'm of Apollo, the other one of Paul, are you not walking like mere men? Are you not walking like mere mortals? Are you not walking like those who have not known the light, those who are still in darkness. So is it evident, is the light evident in the way you speak? It's 
speak to your children, the way you speak to your spouse or your husband or your wife, the way you speak to your workmates, the way you speak to your colleagues, the way you speak to your friends. Can they say there's something? There's a differentiator between the words. The psalmist said, let the words, let my, my mouth, my lips be filled with grace. Paul says, let the words that proceed out of your mouth be seasoned with grace so that they may minister to those who hear them. Is the light evident in how you speak? Is it evident in how you act? Is your, are your actions governed by the light? Are your actions inspired by the light that is inside of you? Or there's no big difference between you and those who are outside? That the same way they act or react to things is the same way you as a believer, you as a carrier of the light of God, behaves. Can somebody watching your actions say that there's a difference between you and anybody else? So this light, this light is evident in how we think about life, how we think about work, how we think about family. How do you think about life? Is the light in you evident, manifest in the way that you think about life? And the way that you think about life will show up in the way that you talk, you speak about life. Because from the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Amen. Matthew 5, verse 14 and 15, the parable. The Bible says, In the same way, let your light so shine before others, so that they may see your good works and give glory to God. Give glory to your Father who is in heaven. That allow, let your light so shine before men. And neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, that it giveth light to those, to, and to all those that are in the house. And then he says, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven, that they may see your good works. We need to see the fruit of your conversation. If you say indeed you are of the light and not of darkness, people need to see your good works. We need to see the fruit that comes out of your engagement with the light Christianity is not a, a private, it's not a private walk where you say it's only God who knows. No, 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 no. He says he called you out of darkness into his marvelous light that you may show forth his praises. That through you his praises may abound. That through you as people see the good works in you. They are attributed to the light that is inside of you. And that the Lord God may be praised and honored. Amen. To walk in the light is to have a daily commitment to living out a righteous life. To walk in the light is to have a daily commitment. Jesus told them, he would come after me. Let him deny himself and daily pick up his cross and follow after me. It's a daily commitment. It's not a seasonal commitment. The Bible says be constant in all seasons. Be constant. Don't waver. Don't be a seasonal 
believer who's committed one day, non-committal the other day, committed again the following day, by virtue of what you can see around you, or what is happening around you. Remember I was talking to a pastor friend the, just a, the other day, and he was saying sometimes when, in this walk of faith, you get to places where the outcomes of faith don't quite represent the object of our faith. The God was covenanted. But we came to the conclusion that we should always fixate our eyes not on the outcomes of faith, but on the object of faith because he was called is true. He's faithful. So that your walk is not yeah, yeah, and nay, nay. So that your walk is not up today, committed today, com non-committal tomorrow. But you're committed to the end. Whether he delivers or not, I've set in my heart. The psalmist said, my heart is fixed. Oh Lord, I will sing and give praise. My heart is fixed. Fixed upon this walk. Fixed upon the call that God has placed on my life. Fixed upon that which God has laid before me. The Bible says, Jesus, for the hope, the joy that was laid before him, and you are the cross, set his heart, that which lie ahead of him. So to walk in the light is to have a daily commitment to living out a righteous life. Those who are compelled to walk in the light resist fellowship with the darkness of the devil, the world, or the flesh. Walking in the light renews and refreshes so that we are empowered to be a refreshment to those around us. That beloved, you walking in the light renews and refreshes you. Not so just you may just feel good, as important as feeling good is, but so that you may be a refreshing, a blessing to those who are around you. Even Peter, the Lord told him, I've prayed for you. The enemy desired, the sa Satan desired to sift you like wheat, but I've prayed for you. And when you stand, when you stand, when you come through, Strengthen your brothers. It's always beyond you. It's always greater than your comfort. Than just victory for you. It's for a refreshing of those who are around you. Let your light so shine so that those who are around you may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. To walk in the light is to walk in truth. 5 John 1 verse 4. To walk in the light is to walk in truth. 5 John. The Bible says, I have no greater joy than to hear that my children are walking in truth. That I have no greater joy than to hear that my children in the Lord are walking in truth. Psalm 86 verse 11. The Bible says, teach me your way, O Lord. I will walk in your truth. Unite my heart. Give me an undivided heart. Daily commitment we spoke. Give me an undivided heart. Unite my heart to fear your name. To walk in the light is to walk in truth. Amen. Galatians 5.16 The Bible says, but I say walk by the Spirit 
and they will not carry out the desire of the flesh. Walk by the Spirit, and you will not carry out the desire of the flesh, of the carnal man. Number two, to walk in the light is to walk in holiness. To walk in the light is to walk in holiness. First Peter 1 Peter 1.15, the Bible says, But as he was called, he is holy. So you also be holy in all your conduct. It's always God first. He sets the standard. Starts by saying God is light. Therefore, those who proceed from him have a mandate on their shoulders, have a burden on their shoulders to walk as children of the light, to walk in the light of the God from whom we've proceeded and in whom we live and move and have our being. He says, as he is holy, It's Him who works in us. For us both to will, to have the willingness, the desire, and also gives the ability to do that which is pleasing in His sight. So it says, be ye holy as I am holy. As I, the Lord your God, is light, so be ye light in this world. Second Corinthians 7, verse 1. The Bible says, Therefore, beloved, since we have these promises, let us cleanse ourselves from everything that defiles, that defiles body and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. To walk in the light is to walk in holiness, beloved. That as God is holy, He has called us to a life of holiness. Paul says we perfect holiness in the fear, in the honor, in the respect of the God who has given us birth again into this hope wherein we stand. First Thessalonians 4, 7. For God has not called us. 4, 7. First Thessalonians 4 and verse 7, the Bible says, For God has not called us to impurity, Him who is of purer eyes to behold iniquity cannot call us to impurity. He has called us to holiness. Same place, the Bible says, for this is the will of God for you, even your sanctification. You are being set apart for holy purposes. You are being set apart for God's purposes that he has called us beloved to holiness Hebrews 12 14 thank you Jesus walking in the light just briefly the Bible says follow peace Hebrews 12 14 Follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Pursue peace with all men. Don't be one who's given to strife. Don't be one who's given to quarrels. Because the Bible says the wisdom that is from above is first of all pure. It doesn't seek its own. It's free from strifes. For where there's striving and evil ambition, there's confusion in every evil work. 
that you pursue peace with all men. Same word says, in as much as it depends on you, live peaceably with all men. That is the way of those who walk in the light. That you pursue peace with all men as much as possible. You desire peace and pursue peace with all men. But above that, you pursue holiness, without which the Bible says no one shall see the Lord. To walk in the light is to walk in purity of heart. To walk in the light is to walk in purity of heart. Matthew 5, 8. To walk in the light is to walk in purity of heart. The Bible says, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. The blessed are the pure in heart. Now, I know the Bible says the heart of man is desperately wicked and evil. But there's a working within us that purifies our hearts. That makes our hearts aligned to His heart. The heart of the God who has called us. Blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see God. Lastly, To walk in the light is basically to follow after God. To pursue God. Psalm 63 verse 8. Psalm 63 verse 8. The psalmist says, my soul follows hard after you. That my soul hungers, follows hard after you. Your right hand upholds me. That his soul de- so desires, that his soul so fast craves, has a longing. Same psalmist was saying, when shall I come and appear before God? To walk in the light is to follow after God. To pursue Him. For your desire to be centered on Him. To be centered on pleasing Him. On bringing him pleasure. Because that's why he made us. That's why he called you out of the darkness into his marvelous light. Not so that you can do your own will. The Bible says, therefore we first judge that if one died for all, then we're all dead. So that they that live should no longer live to themselves, but to him who loved them and died for them. He died for us so that we may no longer live to ourselves but live for Him who called us. I know sometimes you say, my life. This, my life. But when you came to Him, you yielded your life. The Bible says we are baptized into death with him and resurrected through the operation of God. So that now we should no longer live to ourselves. We should no longer continue in the darkness that we used to live in. But that now we may live to him who so loved us and translated us 
delivered us from the kingdom, from the dominion of darkness, from the oppression of darkness, into his marvelous light that we should show forth his praise. That's why Paul says, I'm crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ lives in me. That the light has taken residence, has tabernacled within me, and I no longer live for myself, but for the light that has taken residence in me. To walk in the light. That's where we started. And he said, this is the message we have heard from him and declare to you that God is light. And in him is no darkness at all. If we say, 1 John 1 from verse 5, if we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. That I can't say that I have fellowship with him and still walk in darkness. We say darkness represents all that is sinful and evil. That I can't say that I have fellowship with him and still walk in the works from which I was delivered. But if we walk in the light, verse 7, as he is in the light, mm, if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, I told you God is light. The Bible says it. That it's impossible with God for God to lie. That God is always true. Even when the outcomes of your faith don't seem to prove that it's true, God is always true. That's why I said fixate with the object of our faith, who is God, and not the outcomes of our faith. Because sometimes outcomes may not quite be representative of the faith that we prof profess. But this I know. The Bible says that if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, His Son, cleanses us from all sin. That there is a fountain of cleansing that He has raised for us as we walk in the light. It doesn't mean that we won't fall into sin one time or another. If you fall, John wrote, he said, my children, these things I write to you so that you may not sin. But if you sin, know that you have an advocate with the Father. Know that you have a representative. Know that you have the blood of sprinkling that speaks better things concerning you than your mistakes, than your failures, than your slip-ups. That you should not walk under condemnation. Because there's now no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus. Who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. That every time you fall. I'm not saying you make it a career, but every time you fall, if you fall. There is a fountain. Filled with blood. That cleanses us from all sin. And renews us to a place of fellowship with God. That a believer, blood bought. Saints should not suffer under the yoke of condemnation. It's 
Sometimes we are so fixated with, where, with our falling. How could I fall like that? That we fail to forget. We fail to remember, sorry. That the blood still speaks. That the blood of the everlasting covenant we have with God still speaks even in the midst of our failures. So as you walk in the light, there may be occasions, there may be times you may, even right now, be at a place where you're backslidden just because you slipped into the darkness, into works of darkness. You allow the enemy to weigh you down with condemnation and guilt. But I want to remind you in the name of Jesus that there is forgiveness of sin, there is cleansing, there is deliverance from the bondage of sin. By the blood of his son. If we walk in the light. I want to stop there today. And just remind you. That we are proceeded from God. We are of God. We are born of him. The Bible says him who is born of God does not continue or does not practice sin because his seed, the seed of God abides or remains in him. The seed of God remains in you, beloved. And that seed is the seed of light. So Isaiah says, come, O house of Jacob. Come, O house of Israel. Let us walk in the light of the Lord. Let us rise up to that provision that God has made. Having called us out of the darkness, let us rise and walk in the light of the Lord. Because there are benefits. There's great reward in walking in that light of our God. Amen and amen. I'd like to pray together with us this day as we come to the close of the first part of this series, Walking in the Light. Lord, I give you praise. We magnify you, everlasting God and Father. You, Lord, who called us out of darkness into your marvelous light. That we may show forth your praise. That through our lives, Lord, your name may be praised. I pray, Father, that as you've started the work in us, may you be faithful to accomplish it. To keep working in us that which is well-pleasing in your sight. Pray for every brother, every sister under the sound of my voice that may have strayed away from the light I pray that Father they'll find healing they'll find renewing by the blood of Jesus that the weight of guilt and condemnation will be broken over their lives in the name of Jesus and they'll arise Lord in the liberty, the freedom that is a portion of the children of God, the children of light. Pray that, Father, they will be strengthened to go the way of the Lord. And that, Father, will bring you pleasure and your name will be glorified. I pray for those who might be listening who have not yet come to the knowledge of the living and true God. Those who are still in the bondage of darkness, pray that the bondage will be broken over their lives. That Father, the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ will shine over their lives. 
and that will be translated into the kingdom of your dear son so father we thank you and we bless you your blessing is upon us lord as we go into this new week pray that we'll walk lord in the light of your countenance that your hand lord will be with us and upon us for good that your name will be glorified that the doors the opportunities we are trusting you for, the provision, the deliverances we are trusting you for, the Lord will see them come forth, that your name may be praised. So we thank you and we bless you. In Jesus' name we have prayed and believed and everybody said amen and amen. Wow, we want to thank you for having tuned in today. I trust that the Lord has blessed you, ministered to you, built you through His Word. I want to encourage you to take this opportunity to partner with us in giving through the information that is just below your screen that you may be a blessing to this work and to the God of this work. And as you do so, May the Lord rejoice over you to do you good and continue establishing you and bringing you out into that which He has ordained and purposed for you. We love you and we thank God for you. May the Lord bless you, keep you, and do you good. Till we meet again next time, shalom, amen, and amen.